um, just take this one opportunity to, to, to say one thing. Um, because like we are in a, a, a in a world that's turning right now, and it seems like it's turning really fast, um, and it seems like there's a lot going on, because uh, there is. Um, and one thing that I look to that has been a foundation that's been able to uh, kind of create my unique worldview uh, was being exposed to a film when I was younger. Um, and um, I'm trying to do this. It's called um, Amazing Grace and Chuck, um, and I I've taken it upon myself to now uh, become a prophet of this because no, nobody seems to know understand it exists. In 1984, uh, it's like Jamie Lee Curtis, Gregory Peck, like um, Alex English was the star for the uh, uh, three-point shooter for the Denver Nuggets. Um, he was an NBA star at the time. Um, he played the Michael Jordan of the era. Um, in this movie, I'm going to spoil I'm going to spoil the whole movie right here. But it doesn't matter because you need to see this. You need to understand this existed in 1985 or in 86 when this happened. So in all of our lifetimes and all of these things that like might kind of sound similar to this movie or whatever that, that might be relevant, you've never heard of it. But it's God telling you, like, Jamie Lee Curtis, like, this is like, Cisco and Ebert gave it two thumbs up. This was not underground. This was the narrative. And so the narrative is this. Does anyone, has anyone seen Has anyone before? ever heard of this? I'm just assuming. Amy has. Okay. So this is, and I grew up, on my mom's sitting, she's in the room. I grew up in a uh, cradle Unitarian um, at, over, at our overnighters. This is the sort of stuff that we would have watched in, in, that, in that sort of, um, you know, non-denominational congregation, whatever. So, but it's not a religious movie at all. And so what happens is a kid, he's really good at baseball, the best baseball player on the scene. Um, and he's just good. He's not like in the best of anything. He's just he's just good. Um, and he also in his science class he built he's building a rocket. And so they go they launch this rocket. And because somehow they live in Idaho in a town that has a a, nucle, uh, a, mis, a military base, some of the military people come to this these the science kids rocket launch. And they see it. It's really cool. It works. And they're like, you guys want you get to come tour one of our rocket launches, and they get to see a tour of inside of a base. And they see a nuclear missile. And they're all like, wow, whatever. And, and in it, like, the, the kid, he asks a question. They're asking some questions, and they're like, this is this thing. And they're like, you know, basically, no, um, if, you know, if this, if, if a nuclear bomb goes off, if your mom drops a fork before that fork hits the ground, she won't exist anymore. Um, and it's sort of, sort of, and they're trying to give, wrap their heads around how powerful these things are. And there's like, and like, so we use these, so we don't have to use. We have these, so we don't have to use them. Which is basically why this kid's fed. So he goes home, and he has a nightmare. Of course, he has a nightmare. I mean, come on, he's like a kid. And he like goes the next day. It's a big baseball game. It's the first game of the season versus the Tigers. He goes out there. He gets out there. And he's like, can't do it. I can't play baseball. How can I play baseball? nuclear weapons are like right there like it's right there how can we go about doing this he's like i feel like this is what i do best and i can't do my i can't do my th i can't do my thing if that's happening like how can and so how can anyone and so uh, he does he, he doesn't play the game and they're like they forfeit the game and everyone's like sort of gets mad at him or whatever and that would be it but now it switches to boston the boston celtics and it's got like Red Arbach, the guy who owned the Celtics, he's in this movie. Like the NBA was behind all this. Everybody's behind this, and he's like, you know, the the star, Jamie Lee Curtis is his agent, and he's like reading the newspaper, and he's like, oh, did you hear about this kid? And he's like, she's like, oh, whatever, you contract five million dollars. She's like, yeah, you know, I think I might want to meet this kid. Flies out, meets the kid. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, he can't play basketball now. He meets the kid. He's like, what? This is crazy. Like, it's, it's like, what? What are you talking about? He has a press conference, and he's like. You know what? This kid's the truth. And like they asked him, he's like, and he puts, lets the kid talk. And the kid, he doesn't really have a lot to say. He's not a smart kid. He's just a little kid. He's like, I don't know. I tore this base. They got these weapons. And so, so, so that's kind of it's almost like this little buddy thing. A uh, lots of other sports people come to check this guy out or whatever. A lot of NFL players quit. Like all the whole sports world's up in arms or whatever. It's kind of this thing, but it kind of starts. It, it would kind of peter out because sports people don't really have that much power. But just thinking about all the things we know about in our in our past ten years with sports figures coming out and being ostracized and told not wasn't stay in their lane, that this was the official message that was put out there is just kind of important. So, um, so, so that would be is trying to start Peter out, but like, 
it was affecting sports. And so here's a spoiler alert. The mafia blows up Amazing Grace's plane. He gets killed uh, because it's messing up gambling. And so that kind of, we're kind of like, they think that's going to rock everything back. But the kid, and this is the important part, this is the power we all have. We're not athletes. We're not even the best at any of the stuff we do. Probably. <laughs> um, the kid is crushed. He stops talking. He shuts up. He won't say a word. Eventually, like, and it's like other kids hear about this, and it's, it spreads. There's like a, a, a captain, my captain moment in the classroom where one of his friends, like, you know, a teacher is like, you know, and another kid, like, shuts up, and then all the kids shut up. And then, it, like, it's Hollywood, so it extrapolates, and basically, in Russia, the kids shut up. And in uh, North Korea, the kids shut up. And in China, the kids shut up. And the fucking parent, and so, that's the only thing that forces them to the table. And the, and the meeting, like, in the, the movie, it ends, it's like, you know, the, he's meeting with the American president on a fucking plane, and he's like, you know, this doesn't just happen overnight, but like the fact, is, the fact is like, the Russian president, the premier, his children aren't talking to him, like, so we're gonna do everything we can to give y'all a voice back, and so that's kind of shit. With all the amazing options we had as a species on this planet, we used to have in front of us. I'm I'm scared that all we have left now is a thread the needle amazing your grace and chuck style miracle that's on us like it's always been but no one's ever heard of it so people don't know it feels like we have to create this art now but this art exists to inspire us out there we just have to amplify it and help each other and i don't know that's not what this was about but i feel like it'd be uh, naive to have a gathering and not you know address the million pound elephant in the atmosphere so, um, if you have a chance, I have it on DVD here, I can put it on right now, but I know you it, but definitely take it in and then think about that process, how that jives with what we've lived through and the media literacy that we're trying to process in this data age. So, I don't know, that's, that's, what, that's my shit right now, is trying to get people to understand that we still have, there is still one or two balloons left on the wall, we have a couple shots but it's going to take a lot more work than we've already put in. So.